So I was doing a lot of thinking the last few days. Uh, part of it spurred on by a, a long conversation going on on the Orchestration Online uh, uh, Facebook group about the alto clarinet and the basset horn. Um, a lot of people who are familiar only with orchestral music tend to think that the basset horn is pretty common. It's not. In fact, in all my years working around uh, wind instruments, I have seen exactly one basset horn. Uh, I've seen lots and lots of alto clarinets. I figure the, the number is easily 100 to 1 alto clarinets outnumbering basset horns. Um, so the reason I wanted to make this video is knowing that basset horns are so rare, what happens when we get to a piece that calls for a basset horn and we simply don't have it? Something like Mozart's Requiem. I've performed Mozart's Requiem before. Uh, of course, I've played the bassoon part, not the clarinet part, or should I say the basset horn part, because that's what Mozart called for is two basset horns. Uh, what is most often done is the parts are transposed for the A clarinet, like I've got here. Now, this, uh, the, all the notes will be the same, but some of the timbre will be lost. So what I've done is I have recorded the opening of the first movement, the Requiem, uh, for two A clarinets. So let's have a listen to that. It's fairly nice. Uh, there are some, of course, flaws in my playing. Overdubbing um, without a second player is a little bit uh, challenging right now. Uh, yeah, that took a lot of takes just to get to there. But it's not quite what Mozart wrote because what Mozart wrote is uh, for notes much higher in the Clarino range. So what I then did is I transpose the part for alto clarinet in E flat. This is only a step away on the bigger side from what Mozart originally wrote for the F basset. It's a little bit bigger bore, but I think this really will preserve the sound of the basset horn a lot closer than the A clarinet will. So let's have a listen to the same excerpt played on two alto clarinet. Finally, just for fun, I recorded the first half of it on another instrument. Now this is by far the worst recording because I used the G clarinet. 
This is a, another instrument that's just a step away from the basset horn. This might actually be the closest sound to the basset horn of the three instruments that I recorded. However, this is also the clunkiest instrument, and therefore the recording is also the worst of the three. Uh, but this will get a little bit close because it's closer to the right length and the right bore of a true basset horn. So give the G clarinet version a listen. Now, of course, I wish I had a control sample to have, but I may have several different sizes of clarinet, but basset horn is not one of them. Uh, quite frankly, because basset horns are not common, um, you know, this is the most expensive clarinet that I've bought, and this cost me $300 for my alto clarinet. Uh, a basset horn is going to be about eight to 10000 which is one reason we don't see them often, and no one has ever come out with a cheap student line basset horn. Maybe they should. Um, but for my money, the E flat alto clarinet is the easiest substitute for the basset horn. Far more common, easier to get a hold of. Uh, it's not exactly what Mozart wrote, but it's a it's a fair simulacrum thereof. So, I hope you found this a little interesting. It was kind of a fun experiment to multi-track all those different performances. So, let me know what you think. What instrument, if you can't get a hold of a basset horn, should you use to play Mozart?